All right, everyone, thank you for coming. We're, we're very happy to be all the way out. Uh, today we have a great show by Molly. Get out! The most gross thing. All right, so, uh, let's have a round of applause. and I am the host of this book conference we are having currently. Thank you so much for having me. It really means a lot. So today we will be discussing personal conflicts and battles within oneself and what people go through dealing with their conscious but also other people around them and new environments that they encounter throughout life, whether it's going through relationships or maybe transferring high schools or even just in your everyday life and dealing with other people because we all know that can cause some conflict. So today, our first guest to discuss a book he's been currently reading is Max Levin. A beautiful candy dish. Thank you, thank you, Max. So please tell us, Max, what book have you been reading lately you'd like to share? So yeah, I've been reading an amazing book called uh, David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, which I recommend to to everyone, you're right. I recommend it to anyone. It's an amazing book, um, and basically, it's about uh, David killing Goliath. Um, it's like all about the underdog and how the underdog can always rise above and never um, underestimate an uh, underdog. And Molly, I heard backstage that your book kind of relates to mine in oh, some way. Oh yes. So I was reading "Looking for Alaska," written by John Green one of my favorite authors of all time. Um, this book deals with a boy named Miles who actually goes from not really having any social life outside of his parents to moving into um, a private academy called Culver Creek. Um, it's a boarding school and he actually makes a lot of friends there and it's kind of about their journeys of him coming from a very low social status to becoming a very high man on campus and kind of the life of a friend circle. So I can see how it would relate for, from an underdog who, you know, goes from people underestimate him, people don't think he's good enough necessarily, and then comes out on top in this David Goliath match. Just like how Miles goes from not really having any friends at school and comes and meets friends instantly and is a great kid to hang out with. So I definitely see how an underdog could relate to my book. I mean, yeah, that's great. So, um, I actually found out about my book um, from a 60-minute interview with uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, which was an amazing interview, and I decided that I, I absolutely had to go get the book because I thought it was an amazing story, and I love how he spoke. And he, talk, he talked about how David and Goliath, people thought that uh, Goliath would win because he was the, he, he the quote-unquote stronger guy. He had all the advantages. But they really didn't realize that um, this Gol Goliath had um, was eight feet tall and actually had a tumor on his pituitary gland, which is a, a disease, obviously. Right. And that could definitely affect a performance yeah. in a match like this. So they didn't realize that um, it was actually hard to see for the giant, and um, I don't know. It it, it was it, people thought that it was an unfair match, but it really was um, David's uh, win. So I feel almost as if everyone can be an underdog in their own ways. Obviously, some can go from being an underdog to just being your average person or to a very strong person in a short period of time, making it not noticeable at all that they're an underdog. And other people take a lot of time to come out of their comfort zone, making it very noticeable that they have these underdog qualities. So I'd like to ask Max here, how he maybe deals with being an underdog in everyday life and maybe how you feel that, that reading your David and Goliath book has helped you achieve like growing out of being an underdog a little. Absolutely, yeah. So Malcolm Gladwell basically uh, explained how um, being an, like never underestimate an underdog. They can always, they always have the potential to come up on top. They can always rise to the occasion. Exactly. So um, in, in my case per se is that um, I'm kind of into the stock market, some people know, and I started the, my, my own company. And Some people are strong in different areas, different subjects. Um, some people are strong in school, some people are strong in business, some people are strong in sports, um, but uh, they, they all want to reach the same goal. So 
as some people in school want to work hard um, to get a good job, I am not per se very strong at um, school and it's okay. classes. okay, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. And that's what helps us so, yeah. reach our prime. So. so as an underdog, I feel as if I have to go another route. I have to carve my own path mm -hmm. and um, not go into as far into school as into different connections and um, learning different business techniques and such. And Malcolm Gladwell, um, the writer of the book, really taught me that it, it is possible to be an underdog and it is possible to um, come out victorious. I think that was really well said. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you Thank for coming you very on much our show for having today. me on. And it was um, it was a blast. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank Perfect. you so much. Perfect. Thank you very much. Bye, Max. See ya. So I think Max said it very well in saying it's not necessarily about physical size or shape or proportion to your opponents. It's more of how do we perceive things and how we feel about ourselves. Once again, another way to discuss battling self interconflicts. So I have another guest that I'd like to bring out. Her name is Austin Cuneo, and I would love to hear what she is reading lately. So let's bring her out. <laughs> much for coming. It really does mean a lot. So what have you been reading lately? I've been reading um, The Moon and More by Sarah Dessen, who I have always loved and great recommended book. Um, it's about this girl, Emmeline, and you know, she has this perfect boyfriend. She, you know, she thinks she's living the perfect world. It's her senior year of high school and uh, everybody enjoys those years. And you know, and then she realizes that this kid, Theo, comes from out of town and realizes that you know, he he might be interested in her, and, you know, she kind of has those feelings for the same way because um, she's only been used to dating this one kid, Luke, and how this outsider comes in all of a sudden and goes, oh, well, I think I want to, you know, pursue being, you, you know, your boyfriend and hopefully try and, like, not create a fight, but, you know, create a competition between the two. And um, Emeline realizes that Luke might be this handsome, perfect jock, but... Theo's this outsider who's coming in who's different and, you know, she wants to be with him and so her and Luke break up and, you know, they, they, she ended up be going with uh, Theo throughout the summer and going into college and stuff like that and realizing that, you know, even though you don't need a boyfriend throughout high school and, you know, it's just not going to last forever, but, you know, Theo always had this, this strong will of I will, I will pursue what I want. Wow, that, that sounds really interesting. Another thing that can be seen with inner conflicts is definitely through relationships and obviously through love interests because it can be, it can most certainly be conflicts with other people because a relationship does involve two people and like in Austin's book, there were obviously three people involved in this, what seems to be a love triangle and they have to kind of decide for themselves and battle with themselves about their true love interests and who they feel that they would like to pursue with and what their hopes for their future are because as we all know we all have different hopes and we all love different people so we have to kind of combine them with others to form our own relationships and I think that's a good surface for how relationships are it kind of relates to my book how um, this boy Miles shows up to this school and meets this girl that's just kind of your typical, just outgoing, flirty, flamboyant girl um, who already is in a serious, committed relationship, but Miles it falls instantly attracted to her and has to deal with constantly knowing that he really likes her and wants to be with her, but that she's already committed to someone else. So Austin's kind of turned around where they were able to pursue the new love interest, but I guess that doesn't always work out for every book. But do you think that you like to see them battle with their personal conflicts? How do you think that played out? You know, it's definitely interesting because you can't just say, oh, well, you know, I love this person. I'm going to be with them forever. If you've never never been with anybody, you've never right, been with anybody else. you have to get else. other experience. Yes, you, you want to, you know, you want to go around and see what everybody else is like. You can't just commit to one person. I think that's, you know, you can relate to that everyday world, you know, sports and business and anything like that because, like, say, for sports, for instance, you know, when you're a little kid, your parents want you to do everything, you know, every sport that you can just to see what you like, and you have a conflict. You say you like two sports, and in my instance, you know, I like soccer and field hockey. Well, the problem is they're at the same time, so you have to pick and choose between that. So, you know, you have the conflict of, well, I like this because of the, the one aspect, and then I like, 
I like the other sport because of the different aspects. So you have to take it. Uh, you need to take a step back and see which one you like better. And you know, you have to. You need those options. You need to be able to see like different options and be able to see. Okay, I've tried everything that I wanted to try, and this is what I'm going to go with. I definitely agree with you, and I definitely see where you're coming from. In that you have to explore other options in order to have your own self battles, and that's kind of how you know yourself and know what's best for you, and know the battles that you as an individual need to fight. Um, do you think that reading this book helped you to deal with maybe your personal conflicts that you have with yourself? Oh yes, definitely. You can learn from even a character in a book. You can you can learn from anybody with their conflict. You know they have things, and you're like, oh, maybe I can relate that to you know how I live and. You can say, oh, well, this is how the step they took, and maybe I can relate that, and maybe I can use that in my life, and you can use it in the real world. So even a book can, you know, can help you with decisions that you make in the real world. All right, thank you so much. That was a really lovely chat we just had, and I really did enjoy your book, so I'm definitely going to add that to my list. Thank you so much for coming out. It thank really means a me. lot. And I hope to see you soon back hope on the see show. You too. Bye, Austin. So I think Austin brought up some great key points about dealing with love and being able to overcome yourself and help other people maybe overcome themselves. Because sometimes as an underdog or as an individual battling self-conflicts, you need influences from others along with experiences by yourself. So I think being around other people definitely does help influence you and support you in coming out as your own individual. So um, I have one more super special guest I'd like to bring out. Um, her name is Alex Manchell, and she is really just a lovely person, and I can't wait to hear what she has to say about the book she's been reading. I hear it's great. So let's bring her out. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. You look lovely as Thank always. You. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Thank you. So, would you like to share with us what book you've been reading? Okay, so I've been reading a book called Right Behind You. It's about this boy named Kip, and he, like in Max's book, has um, killed somebody, but not on purpose. He wanted, apparently, a baseball glove that this other boy had. I and see priorities become a thing to different people, but to each his own. That's definitely fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he really wanted this glove, and this boy was rubbing it in his face, so he saw gasoline, and that was the closest thing to him that he could apparently throw on him, so he did, and apparently there was a match that was close, and so he caught on fire, and he just that now, from that point, had to step back and look at his life in a different aspect because of what had happened. So now he had to be in a mental hospital, he had to go through all of that, and then he had to come out with a different name to be like a different person. Okay, so I could understand from your book that um, this individual uh, unfortunately was involved in a killing of someone. Um, that's very unfortunate. Um, however, that's kind of something that we at all as individuals deal with, and I guess that he dealt with it too, considering he had to go into a mental hospital and get therapy. As, as underdogs, we also have a big factor of embarrassment. And I can get a sense that this character felt embarrassed by what he did because he didn't understand going into it, the consequences and the outcomes it could possibly have. And then living with that guilt prior to the unfortunate circumstance and event, um, that he had to learn to cope with it. And coping is a huge, I can't emphasize it enough how great of a deal it plays with your individual self and your personal conflicts because we can deal with those things every day of overcoming a fear of something or if you felt embarrassed because someone made fun of what you were wearing in school, like various things that we can go through every day. And we don't realize um, to what extent that people, an individual might go through dealing with their guilt of something. So um, definitely this character um, seems like a perfect advocate for the position of dealing with personal conflicts in the uh, category of cope and stress and embarrassment because I mean it's just a fact that we all cope different ways um, and it's easier for others and it's harder for others just like it's an some people are an underdog at it and other people are 
masters at it. So exactly. how do you feel that it plays in your life, being I with feel embarrassment like and things like that? Being able to cope with something is easily um, said that it's harder for some people and easier for others. Definitely when you go up and have to present something in class or even like uh, during sports ceremonies, when you go up to achieve, uh, get an award that you achieve, um, it leads to either some embarrassment in your part if you're going up and to present and you know that you're Depending nervous. Depending on the person. Um, exactly. And I feel like that really plays out in the book because it shows that he um, had a hard time going through high school, having to deal with this internally when not everyone else knew what he had gone through. So when he was making friends that he, that the other people hadn't known his whole life mm -hmm. about what had happened, it was really hard for him because every time something would go wrong, that he would just remember this one thing in the back of his head that no one else knew. And it's, it was so hard for him to cope with it. So um, one day he just let it all out to everyone and everyone took Sometimes it. Sometimes people reach that boiling point where they yeah. just can't take exactly. it Exactly. Because it was so hard for him, and so his friends all of a sudden weren't his friends anymore after they knew what had happened. Meanwhile, his name's Kip. He knew um, Kip didn't really know how to deal with this because he really didn't know what was happening at that time. He didn't he know. With himself, maybe. Yeah. He didn't want to have this boy killed. He didn't know that he was going to have to deal with this for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So that... Um, after that, he, again, had to pick up his whole, all his family moved with him. He had his father and his stepmother, and then his mom had already died, so she had, he also had to deal with his mother's death, um, which he really didn't want everyone knowing, um, playing along with that embarrassment part. I can understand where he'd be coming from. So already have to overcome um, his past events with this unfortunate other boy um, accidentally getting killed. But to then have to take on the weight and responsibility of coping with the death of another person, I could exactly. see how that would be a major conflict in his life. Yeah, and going along with Austin's book, every single time he would try to get into a relationship, he would feel like he really loved the person, but he couldn't show, he couldn't he explain didn't know how to, to them. express maybe. Yeah. Because he was afraid of possibly hurting them because yeah. he'd been hurting other loved ones indirectly. And because he really. He can't tell anyone else because mm -hmm. he does. He can't move anywhere else because everyone already um, from the other um, where he was before already knew about that, and it had already been all over the news. So he can't. He doesn't have any more options, and it was just really hard for him to cope with again yeah. um, because of his whole situation. Right. Thank you. And um, those were some great points, and I really appreciate the time we had to talk. Thank you so much for coming Thank out. Thank you so much for show. having me. It was great. <laughs> great to see, see you, you too. And hopefully I'll see you again of soon. Of course. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> you said the same thing, but I, I guess it means a lot then. Um, so like what Alex was saying, that um, embarrassment and coping with things are very play very key roles um, in the grand scheme of things and um, dealing with self-confidence and personal conflict. And I think, as we could see from each book, that with Max, um, that like talking about overcoming and being an underdog, that even just because you start out on the bottom does not mean you can't motivate yourself to move up in the world. Just because you start somewhere doesn't mean that's where you have to stay. There's room for improvement. There's also room for error. Um, but with the help of surrounding people and the relationships you build, like what Austin was saying, um, you can learn to take into consideration other people. You can learn to deal with them and interact with them. Maybe change yourself to see the perspectives of other people. Not change yourself for other people, but to just hear them out and to see where they're coming from as individuals and to learn from them and help you grow as a person. And then what Alex was saying, um, something that all high schoolers, I think, would deal with, or any parents maybe, it doesn't really matter what age you are. You can deal with embarrassment and coping anywhere you go and being afraid of what your past is. But your past is your past and your future is wide open. So you have to just remember 
who you are, remember your values and your personal conflicts will always be there, but they're there to help you shine. They're not there to fail you. So please take into consideration everything we've said today. Thank you so much to our lovely guests. I've really enjoyed this time. We love you, Molly. Have a nice night, everyone, and see you soon. Bye.